Who are the real biblical Israelites? That is the question that we will be tackling today because I have had enough of this lie that is being propagated against people and I'm sure many of you out there have also had enough of this lie because this is the the biggest deception of all time and the truth is coming to light today because what you're about to see are never before seen images of the real biblical Israelites and we are going to tackle who the real biblical Israelites were and who the real biblical Israelites are today. So stay tuned because there is a lot of truth coming your way and a lot of answers coming your way. Now today I'm going to let scripture and history speak for itself because in order for any nation to be considered the chosen or for any nation to be considered the true children of Israel, they have to fulfill all of the curses that are spoken of in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 15 through 68 as well as Leviticus chapter 26 verses 14 through 46. And the question is, does the 1948 Eight, nation of Israel fulfill all of the curses that are spoken of in scripture or do they only fulfill some of them in order for any group of people to claim to be the chosen people of so-called God they have to fulfill all of the curses because long story short the children of Israel did not adhere to the commandments and because of that all of the curses fell upon them but the question is just who did the curses fall upon and do t and does today's Israel fit that description of scripture like I said for any group of people to suggest that they are the chosen they must fit all of the curses that are spoken of in De Deuteronomy or Dabarim chapter 28 verses 15 through 68 and Vayikra Leviticus chapter 26 verses 14 through 46. They must fit the curses where they will serve their enemies in a land that they do not know. They must, they must have had their children sold to other people. They would be enslaved again in ships and sold into slavery. They would have poverty, sickness, disease, and they would be war stricken all over they would have torture and anguish and these people that scripture is talking about they would forget who they are and these group of people must fit this description they they would be in a strange land that is not their own and they would have strangers to be their head while they are the tail i am paraphrasing what scripture actually says they would have there would be great plagues to come upon these people there will be distress heartache and constant pain these people would be discriminated against and no one would be able to help them there will be yokes of iron around their necks and they would speak a strange language and they would not know who they are and the question is and the question we should be asking ourselves today is according to scripture and according to history does this group of people fit that description that is spoken of in scripture do these group of people who claim to be the chosen who claim to be the jews do they fit the description of the curses because if they do not then there is a giant deception that is going on but like i said before we go any further let's let history speak for itself because I am about to prove to you and show you real authentic images of the real biblical Israelites and you're going to see exactly how they looked and how some of the prophets looked, how some of that what you call angels or messengers looked, how our Messiah, Yahusha, how he looked, the real images as well as the real images of the other prophets and how they looked. And today we're going to go over who the real biblical Israelites were back then and then then later on we will go over who the real biblical Israelites are today because just like I said only one group of people has fulfilled all of the blessings and curses not to mention the 400 year prophecy that is spoken of in Genesis or Barashith chapter 15 verses 13 and 14 as well as Acts or Afsim chapter 7 verses 6 through 7 and because it's in the Brit Hadashah or the renewed covenant we know that it is not talking about the Egypt 
relationship that occurred back during the time of Moses. It is talking about a second Egypt, and we're going to identify what that second Egypt is. But like I said, I am approaching this from Scripture itself. I'm approaching this from the viewpoint of Scripture. I'm approaching this from from the most neutral perspective there is because the truth is what makes you free and not only that we are going to let scripture and history speak for itself because many do not know but actually what you call the bible is a history book about one group of people and today we're going to see who that group of people is i am not approaching this from a religious viewpoint or from a religious standpoint i'm approaching this from a historical standpoint so let's get that straight and let's get that through our heads that scripture is about is a history book about one group of people and who are those group of people i will let history speak for itself you are about to see our real authentic images that have been purposefully hidden from you and these images and pictures that you are about to see are going to expose to you who the real biblical israelites were who the real prophets were and how they really looked how the messiah really looks how his mother really looks as well as how the messengers or who you call the angels how they really look and you're about to see in old ancient paintings how these how they were depicted and how the real biblical Israelites were depicted and just where it really comes from and you're going to see a bunch of Russian icons that depict and prove who the real biblical Israelites really are are, and you're going to see the bigger agenda behind all this because so much has been hidden from you and the question we need to be thinking about is why has this been hidden from us but I have done a ton of research I've done and conducted so much research hours and hours of research to bring all of this to you so you can see the truth for what it is so here we go and you're going to see a montage and clips of images and icons of the real biblical Israelites. And so here we are, and I'm gonna scroll down and you're going to see one of who, what is most known as the Virgin and who the Messiah, and look at what their skin color is depicted as. These are real authentic images, and you know they're authentic because they still have scratch marks all over them. But I'm going to tell you, it goes much deeper than this. There are many more images I want you to see, so let's just get right to it. Like I said, these are real, authentic pictures and images of the real biblical Israelites that took hours and hours and countless hours of research to find. And as you can see in this one here, who do you see? I will let you answer that on your own, but who do you see? You see what is commonly known as the Virgin Mary to the world, but who do you see right here? The Messiah. And what color are they? Well, that should be a real hint and clue. Not only that, but you also see this symbol right here. And if you watch my 666 and the mark of the beast and what the mark of the beast really is, then you will know and you would have been paying attention to know what this symbol really means. And, and this isn't the only place you see it, but this is showing you the real authentic picture of I Russian icon of who? The Messiah and the mother. And oh, but it goes much more deeper than that because the images, I'm telling you, this is real truth being revealed to you today. Remember, the truth is what will make you free. I'm going to kind of speed along here, but it, once again, we see who does this remind you of? That's all I'm going to ask you. We see more icons in what looks to be depicted of one of the Talmudim or disciples during the time. And what color is he? I will let you answer that on your own, but if you keep scrolling down, it, it even shows you a close up picture zoomed in. Who does that remind you of? What color is his skin? That's all I'm going to tell you. These are real authentic pictures of the real biblical Israelites back then and like I said the question we're going to ask be asking and wondering today is who were the original biblical Israelites but it's not just them it keeps going here is another Russian icon that shows you who the real biblical Israelites were and are. And of course, these paintings go all the way back to the 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th centuries AD. This is nothing new. And it's before all of the whitewash that happened. But as you can see, here's the Messiah. What color is he? Not only that, but here are what appear to be the Talmudim or the disciples. What color are they? Let's keep going. 
Now this is a very old and very vintage painting of the Messiah. And as you can see, well, what color is he? That's all I'm going to tell you. You can also read about it in Revelation chapter 1, verses 13 through 15. But I'm doing this so you can actually see history being unfolded right in front of you so that you can stop making excuses and you can stop believing the white lies that are out there and start believing truth that is right in front of you because this is the real authentic picture of the messiah and what color is he black oh but color doesn't matter oh but it really doesn't matter what color the messiah is does it really or is there a bigger deception that is going on here here is another depiction of what appeared to be the disciples and the messiah once again in another ancient russian icon as you can see and all of these come from Russia. And as you can see, what color are they? Who were the original biblical Israelites? What color were they? Why has all of this been hidden from you? I wonder why. And it even shows what two uh, figures on what horsemen, reminding you of Revelation, just like the Revelation today of who the real biblical Israelites were and are. I hope you're heeding the warning. And so we see it here once again of an icon that appears to depict the Messiah who is treading over who? The fish and the serpent. And this fish looks very reminiscent of a sea serpent. Very interesting. Are they just depicting this because they have nothing better to do? Or are they actually telling you truth? What color are they? Let's keep going. Now what this picture shows you right here is a Russian icon of who? None other than the Messiah and his mother. And of course we know these these images are graven and abominable according to the commandments, but I'm showing you this for educational purposes because I'm trying to educate you and show you who the real biblical Israelites are so that you can be without excuse and start to see the truth for what it really is. And it gives even a close-up of both um, with the Messiah and his mother, and we can see what color are they. But not only that, we know it's authentic because we see that it looks like it's starting to tear off. So we know it's very old, and it's a very ancient uh, vintage painting. But let's keep going. We also know that this is authentic because we see that same symbol right here. I wonder what it is. Watch my 666 Mark of the Beast if you haven't already seen it, because it's alluding to religion itself but I'm showing you this so you can actually see truth right before your eyes you can see that it's being peeled off so we know it's authentic we know it is true but what will you believe now I'm going to speed it up a little bit, but this is showing you another Russian icon of what appeared to be how the t uh, disciples and everyone looked back then. And once again, what color are they? And you can, as you can see, these are real authentic pictures that the Russians depicted back then. But if we keep going, we also see ones that depict the messengers and the set apart messengers or who you call the angels in this one right here. We also see figures right here as well and what are they depicted as what color are they really and you can even see the zoom in close-up of them if we continue to scroll down and we can continue to go and you will see them even up closer how do they look that is up to you but let's keep going if we keep going here we see another depiction of what looks to be not only uh, disciples but also the messiah himself who is that who does that remind you of but let's keep going if we scroll all the way down we see what appears to be one of the disciples but if we keep going who does this remind you of who does this look very reminiscent of I'll let you figure that out on your own but let's keep going and we see the same thing we saw earlier with the treading of the horse very interesting and we, we also see the woman that is being depicted here as well Oh, but that's not all. He who have an ear, let him hear. Who is this really depicting? It should be a no-brainer. But guess what? What color is he? It should be a no-brainer. It's right in front of your face. This is how the Messiah actually looked. Although his hair was not like this, his hair was woolly and it was white. But his skin color, that's exactly how his skin color looked. And like I said, this isn't about race. This isn't about color. I'm not trying to make 
make this into a color thing. I'm trying to show you the truth and what's been hidden from you all along because all of this stuff has been hidden from you and it took me hours of research to give you all real authentic truth. But see, the problem is some of you are still going to try to make this into a race card and still try to say that, oh no, the original biblical Israelites were white, even though I'm showing you real authentic proof that that is not the case. But what will you believe? Will you still believe the reprobate mind of the lie? Or will you wake up now and see the truth that is right in front of you that has been in front of us all along with scripture to even prove it. You can even look at how the Messiah looks in Revelation chapter 1 verses 13 through 15. Oh, but everyone loves skipping over that, don't they? And this was before the cleaning, so this is actually how it really authentically looks. And I hope you are seeing that with both your eyes open and you're going to stop believing the lies out there because I'm bringing you real authentic truth from the heart. What is this icon depicting? It is depicting the return of the Messiah. And what color is he? And you can see the set apart messenger or what you may call the angels here. And no angels don't have wings, but you can also see others right there as well. You can see the depiction here. Now, yes, I'm aware that this is, of course, abominable. As long as if you're worshiping it, it's abominable. But I'm showing you this for educational purposes. Let's get that through our heads right now so that you can stop believing the lies that are out there and see with your own two eyes the truth about the Messiah and even the prophets, which I'm going to show you even more later on. And here we have a depiction of more of the set apart messengers or who you may call the angels. And here we have the Messiah as well, as well as the mother right there. So we can see what color they really are. And we also have another one that seems to depict one of the disciples as well as what, what appears to be the Messiah himself and all the others around him. And the question is, what color are they? I hope you're seeing this with both eyes open. Oh, but if you thought it stopped here, oh no, there's more. There is always more. Oh, how history does not lie. Oh, how history is telling you the actual authentic truth, but everything is being hidden from you. And what is this picture really showing you? It is showing Showing you the Messiah with the crown and the disciples. Now, yes, I am aware of the sun worship symbolism that is in this, but like I said, I'm showing you this for educational purposes so that you can see who the real biblical Israelites were and how they were portrayed as. Because remember, man only lies, yet let Yahuwah be the truth and let man be a lie. And remember, history does not lie. Oh, but I know one group of people who do lie and who have been lying for centuries and centuries, but I'll let you answer that on your own. Like I said, I've done a ton of digging and a ton of research to find out all of this stuff for you. Now, this is a Russian icon that depicts none other than Moses or Musha himself, and this is from the 16th century AD from the Northern School. And as you can see, this is how Moses is accurately depicted and shows a scroll as well. Oh, but this is not the only depiction of Moses or Musha we see even more as well. Now this is another Russian icon that depicts Moses or Musha and as you can see it depicts Moses and the burning bush and you, what you'll see is that this version and depiction of Moses looks very similar to the other icon of Moses that I've just shown you and if you don't believe me you can pause the video and look at both of them and he's also holding a scroll. Now this comes from the 18th century AD from the Kizhi Monastery. It is in public domain and it is even sponsored by Wikipedia. And you'll even see that Wikipedia shows you truth as well. But I hope you're seeing it with both eyes open. Now this is a Russian icon that depicts both Ezekiel and Daniel. And as you can see, here's Ezekiel right here and you, you can see his scroll that is right there. And this is Daniel over here. And this is the scroll that he is depicted as. And as you can see, how do these prophets look? These are how the original biblical prophets actually looked. And I'm even gonna share scripture with you that even proves that they were black back then. And you're gonna see exactly what I'm talking about. Like I said, the truth is coming to light now. 
now. Now this is an ancient icon and it's a Russian icon and it depicts the prophets King Solomon and Ezekiel. And as you can see, King Solomon here is depicted wearing a crown and Ezekiel or Yakoskal is here depicted like this. And what you start to see is that Ezekiel looks very similar to the Ezekiel that we saw in the other Russian icon that I've just shown you. Don't believe me? Pause the video so you can actually see it. And you can see the scroll that they're holding right here. Now this was an icon that was uh, founded back in Russia, Moscow to be exact. And it was founded in the 16th century AD linked with the name Andrei Rubulyov, and it, it is also available in the Purchasing Commission of the Experts of the State Hermitage Museum, 1960. That is where you can find this painting right here. And I'm going to zoom it and enlarge it so you can see a better picture of it right now. Like I said, here is the enlarged picture, and you can find this, like I said, in the Purchasing Commission of the Experts of the State Hermitage Museum back in 1960, and it comes from Russia back in the 16th century AD. And as you can see, this is King Solomon right here. If we scroll down, this is the scroll that he has right here. This is a real authentic painting, and if we go over here, you can see enlarged that this is right here, none other than Ezekiel. But the question I have for you is, why don't they look white and why don't they appear white like all the paintings that we see today that they just love to show us and depict to us in Hollywood movies? Why don't they look anything like this? That's the question. Somebody is lying to you. Somebody is lying and has per perpetrated this lie for many, many, many centuries. Somebody is the synagogues of Satan and we're going to see exactly who they are. It seems as though there's been a huge identity theft because here's another Russian icon depicting King Solomon and how does he look he looks very black and dark skinned to me you can also read about that in the Song of Solomon chapter 1 verses 5 through 6 which we'll go to later on so you'll see that I'm not making this stuff up not only that but it, it looks very similar to the pro the, to the other icon we just saw earlier of King Solomon don't believe me pause the video so you can actually see it for yourself and stop believing the lies of white stream mainstream media and see the truth for what it really is because I'm telling you when the black messiah returns and he still sees that you're worshiping a white image oh he's going to be very furious with you unless you wake up to this truth right now. Now this is the Russian icon of what appears to be Daniel. Now some may say that this is actually Moses but it very, looks very reminiscent of Daniel. And as you can see, here's the scroll right here. This is a Russian icon. What color does it look like to you? I'll let you answer that on your own. Now this for surety is Nahum, and I'm going to prove that it is Nahum later on, but as you can see, this is a Russian icon that features Nahum, and you can see the scroll that he's holding right here, as well as how he really actually looks. And you're going to see another picture of Nahum with another prophet, and you're going to see that he looks very similar to this, so it looks like their depictions aren't off. Like I said, who's really lying to you? Remember, who's really lying to you? That is the question because this is a Russian icon that was found around circa 1497 and it depicts and shows you Malachi right here as you can see with the scroll that he's holding and it shows you who none other than Nahum himself. And as I said, it matches the picture very, very reminiscent of the one we just looked at of Nahum. But this comes from St. Cyril of Bielozersk, the monastery, in Russia and so this actually comes from a monastery and like I said this was completed circa 1497 what happened why did they stop depicting the prophets like this I wonder why here is another ancient picture that depicts Aharun or Aaron, the priest, as you can see right here, and he's holding up a scroll. And this is a very, very, very ancient Russian uh, icon that you can actually find on Wikipedia's public domain and the Wikimedia Commons. If you really do your research and dig deep enough, you will find this stuff. Uh, what does the scripture say? Seek and you shall find. 
Oh, but we're not done. We are just getting started. This is a picture depicting and showing you who Musha or Moses and what color is he? And wow, look at his hair. Hair like wool, woolly hair. Wow. Just like scripture says in Revelation chapter 1 verses 13 through 15 uh, that describes the Messiah and even what describes our father Yahuwah in Daniel chapter 7 verses 9. Wow. Very clear and distinct indeed. Who's lying to you? I'll let you figure that out on your own. Here's another ancient depiction of Moses the Ethiopian and it says our venerable father. So as you can see here's Moses again and he very looks reminiscent of the one we just saw. You can pause it and look back and as you can see how does he look? Why has this been hidden from you? Now this is a hand-painted icon that is showing you Daniel the prophet and I wonder how he looks and it's showing you also another Russian iconic scroll and the iconographer is Gina Lamar and it's showing you uh, Daniel as a young lad that mysterious image seen by Nebuchadnezzar in a dream an image that was composed of different metals but was shattered shattered and ground to dust by a certain stone which had been honed out of a mountain without the hand of man so this is an accurate depiction of daniel but like i said there's way more we are just getting started now this is showing you and depicting you a Russian icon of the prophet Habakkuk and its period comes from around circa 1600 AD with dimensions of 72 and a half by 49 and a half centimeters and as you can see he's holding a scroll right here. This is how Habakkuk looked. This is an accurate depiction of how he looked and the description says that the prophet Habakkuk is the eighth of the 12 minor prophets of the Old Testament or the Tanakh and that he lived around 650 BC and some say that he was of the tribe of Levi because some scholars assume that the last chapter of the book of Habakkuk was in fact a songbook who served as a musician in the temple of Shaluma or Solomon so that is what this says so as you can see, this is a more accurate depiction of Habakkuk. Oh, but like I said, they're not the only ones who depicted this. Wikipedia even admits truth to you too. And you're gonna see exactly what I'm talking about. Now this is depicting Prophet Malachi and it's showing you Prophet Malachi, a Russian icon of him and here's the scroll that he's holding and this comes from about circa 1310 AD and this was a painting by Ducio di Buoning Segna and this is found in the Museo dell'Opera del Duomo in the Siena Cathedral. So it's an actual real authentic picture of Malachi and this is how he actually looked. Oh, but that's not all. Now I'm going to show you more pictures of the real authentic Messiah before he was painted over. And as you can see, this is a Russian depiction of the Messiah and what color is he? It's real obvious now. And remember this symbol right here. I hope you're paying attention to it because there it goes much deeper than you think. Now this is an icon depicting Christ Emmanuel and it says the region comes from central Russia the period of late 18th century AD its size is about 37 and a half by 34 centimeters and as you can see this is based upon Isaiah or Yashayahu chapter 7 verses 14 that's where this icon comes from but this is an ancient icon and we see the symbolism right there all over again the ICXC or the Greek letters huh very interesting now this is showing you another Russian icon and another depiction of Christ Emmanuel from Northern Russia, 17th century AD. And as you can see, this is how he actually looks. Not only that, but this is actually from an auctioning website and it costs roughly $12,000 to $15,000 just to get one of these. I wonder why it costs so high and I wonder what the costs have been to hide and keep this stuff from you all along. Here is another ancient depiction and another Russian icon of who none other than the Messiah himself and his mother depicted right here. And as you can see, this is real authentic stuff right here. And it goes on even downward. And you can see it even up closer, zoomed in. And we see the ICXC, the symbolism, the Greek words right there. And these letters we've already gone over, but you can see it up close here. Wow, what color does it look like? It looks authentic to me. It looks like the real thing to me. What happened? Where did all the white ones come from? 
Now this is the true image of the Messiah that's found in the Roman chapel in Yerushalayim or Jerusalem. And as you can see, what color are they? I'm telling you, you can pause it and look at it. But remember, the truth is coming to light today. You are seeing the truth, real authentic truth, so that you are without excuse to making lies and these little white lies that have gone on for centuries upon centuries upon centuries. Here is another Russian depiction and a Russian icon. And who does it look like? Who does it remind you of? I'll let you figure that out on your own. And we see this Greek symbols and the Greek letters right there again and the halo around it too. But like I said, this is for educational purposes. But it says, I am that bread of life. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Wow, is that quoting scripture? I wonder who that's talking about. I wonder who that is showing you. I wonder what the I wonder why they've hidden this from you. What are they hiding? Once again, this is showing you Moses. And how does he look? It says St. Moses the Black. Oh, very interesting. Oh, but you still think he's white? Oh, you still think he has white skin? I suggest you think again. Now, this is a Russian icon that appears to be depicting King David, but not only King David, it also appears to be depicting the temple right here. You can see him by his crown, and you can see him by the hairs on his head and what he's wearing, and what color is he? Like I said, it's not a color issue, but why would they go through such an effort to hide all this stuff from you? Because they don't want you to know the truth. They don't want you to know the real history for what it really is. And this is the depiction of King Solomon or Shaluma. You can see he's wearing a crown. I don't know if you can really see that. And here's the scroll that he has right here. And this is another Russian painting from Ducio di Bu Bueno Zegna from circa 1310. And the text of the scroll is from Psalm or Tahalim chapter 72. And that is why it is thought to be King Solomon. And of course, Ducio di Buen and Zegna, he ruled, he was around from around circa 1255 through 1319 AD. And this is from the Museo del Opera, Opera Metropolitana del Duoma in the Siena Cathedral. And this was taken around circa 1308 to 1311 AD. Here we see more accurate depictions of the Messiah, Yahusha, and his mother. Now, although we know he has woolly hair, well, they got the skin part right. And I'm telling you, real authentic truth that they're keeping hidden from you. I wonder why that is. Like I said, the question we are tackling today is who are the real biblical Israelites? And before we answer who they are today, we have to first find who they were originally. And this is showing you another Russian icon of none other than King Solomon or Shaluma. And you can see his crown right here. You can see what appears to be the temple behind him as well as the scroll. And wow, when you look at the depiction of the skin, of you can see not only dark skin, but you see what appears to be skin that matches what of Negro descent, of so-called African-American descent. Could they be the real biblical Israelites? It's starting to look like it. Oh, now it's all making sense, isn't it? Now, this is a very rare painting, and as you can see, it depicts Adam and Eve, or Adam and Hannah, and what it's really showing you is Adam and Eve in the garden. Oh, but how do they look? Genesis chapter 2, verses 7, or Barashid chapter 2, verses 7, tells you that Yahuwah made and formed man from the dust of the ground. What color is dust? Here is another rare piece, and it's by Ducio di Buenzegna, and it's from the 1300s AD, and this is a very rare piece and depiction, and as you can see, this is depicting Moses right here, and this is depicting King David right there, and if I zoom in a little bit more, you can see it a little bit more. Here's the scroll that they hold up, so like I said, King David right here, Moses right here, huh, but they're not showing you that in textbooks, are they? Now, this is a very rare piece, too. It's by Stefano di Giovanni, and it's a very rare piece, and it comes from around circa 1423 through 1424. And what is it really showing you? Here's Elijah and Elias. What is it really showing you? I hope you are seeing j just the bigger agenda and seeing how all of this has been hidden from you. Not anymore.
Now, this is a very rare Russian icon as well, and it appears to be depicting the Messiah, Yahusha HaMashiach, up there, and this is said to be James. Now, I'm not sure if that's actually true, but that is what it says, and as you can see, how do they look right here? But let's keep going, and if it zooms in, you can see them even more, even better right here, and these are actual prophets, as we can see, and as we scroll up, we can see him even closer right here. It looks really authentic and really real to me. I wonder who's doing the line then here is another depiction and like I said this is for educational purposes only but I see a black messiah up here and I also see some other prophets and disciples down here as well what color are they let's keep going and let's keep scrolling down oh widen legs very interesting let's keep going so this is a zoom in of the messiah who's coming in the clouds and we know it's the messiah because of these Greek symbols and like I said what does it really mean okay let's keep going you can see them up close closer right here and we know it's authentic because of all the scratches and the tears that it has in it we know it's authentic and we also know it's authentic because they did a good job hiding it from us but let's keep going if we continue to scroll down we can see uh, all of them enlarged a little bit more holding a book right here and we can also see the woman on the far right as well right there so that's a little bit of a better image that you can see oh but like I said there's much more than this Here's the true image of the Messiah, and as you can see, it depicts Emmanuel or Yahusha HaMashiach, and it's a depiction from 1816 circa AD. And as you can see, what does it show you? It shows you the Russian icon of the Messiah. But do you still think he's that white so-called JC that they're depicting everywhere? Doesn't look like it. Somebody is lying to you. Somebody has bared false witness to you and has perpetrated the biggest deception of all time. Somebody is lying. Could it be the synagogues of Satan according to Revelation chapter 2 verses 9 and Revelation chapter 3 verses 9, the two verses that all the so-called end time prophets and end time teachers love skipping over? Could that be what it is? Oh, of course it is. And this is showing you who? Peter or Kaffa and Paul. Shaul in the 17th century AD and this is showing you right here the Messiah right there this is Peter this is Paul now let's uh, if we zoom in a little bit more we can see it a little bit right there but wow very interesting and suspicious indeed this is a picture that depicts Samson as he is fighting a lion as spoken of in the book of Judges chapter 14 verses 5 through 6 and oh what color does he look right here if we zoom it in a little bit more you can actually sort of kind of see him the face right there a little bit looks really authentic to me what happened Here's a Russian icon of King David, or Dawid, as we can see right here. And this is the scroll that he is holding right here, actually. And as we can see, this is how he looks. The, he has his crown on right there, and it looks like he's holding, what, the Torah, the Book of the Law. And these are his robes that he is in. He looks like a king to me. Looks real accurate to me. Here's another Russian icon depicting Yahusha HaMashiach, or what you may call Christ, and his mother Mary, or whose, really, whose real name is Miriam. And as you can see, this is a real depiction of the Russian icon. And as you can see, here's the, the symbol. So we know it's actually true and real. And this is a better zoom in of it. And we know it's true and authentic because we see all the, pa the paper tearing off a little bit more. But it looks real authentic to me. So the question is, what happened? How did everything become whitewashed? Because I have just spent over half an hour with you showing you dozens and dozens of pictures and images of all the different prophets in the Messiah himself from both the Old and the New Testament that show you and depict to you black biblical Israelites. So what happened is the question. How did they become white is the question. How did they become white? How did they go from this to this? How did it go from this to this? How did it go from this to this? How did it go from dark skin black as described in Revelation chapter 1 verses 13 through 15 to this? How did that happen? I'll let you figure that out on your own. How did that happen? What happened? How did they become whitewashed? What happened? 
I'll tell you what happened. They were painted over. Oh, the wonders of a paintbrush. Oh, what wonders a paintbrush can do. Because as you can see right here, the synagogues of Satan, what did they do? They painted over the images of the real black biblical Israelites. And I've, I've just proven that to you with the real authentic image showing you of what? A synagogue of Satan, the fake Jews painting over the real biblical Israelites who were black painting them from black to white. How did that happen? And for those of you who still want to be willfully ignorant and still want to ignore this truth and still want to sit there and say, oh no, they were still white and still want to sit there and be willfully ignorant and bear false witness to the real biblical Israelites, woe unto you because I am showing you real authentic truth. So you can sit there and think that the Messiah is white all you want to, but I'm telling you now, it's not going to be good because when the real Messiah Messiah returns and he looks nothing like the JC that you see all over the place, or should I say the man of lawlessness, or should I say the image of the beast. Oh, shame is going to be upon you unless you wake up now and see the real authentic truth for what it really is. Oh, but they'll never notice. They'll never know. They won't know because that is exactly what's going on because everything has been whitewashed. The wonders of a paintbrush to not only fool so-called black people who the real biblical Israelites are, so-called African Americans, but also to fool white people too because of the synagogues of Satan. Oh, but you still sit there and think that, uh, that everything I'm sharing with you is a hoax? You still sit there and try to make excuses and try to, you know, d detest the truth. Woe unto you if you do. But this is real authentic truth that is being revealed to you today. And I hope you're seeing it with both eyes open and that you're starting to see the truth for what it really is. Now, I do not take credit for this. I give credits to Afrocentric Queen for doing this and finding all of this stuff that I'm showing you right now that shows you the, what the before and after, because that's what I'm going to be showing you. And this is the before and after in an interior of a monastery that is located in Romania. This is how the Messiah looked before, and this is how he looked after. I wonder what changed, and I wonder how it got changed. These are just some more pictures of before and after. And as you can see, what happened? This is how it looked before and this is how it looked after. What changed about it? I wonder what changed. Oh, the wonders of a paintbrush. You want proof? Here's proof because this is real proof of King James. And what color was he before? He was black. And then what happened? Oh, they painted him white. Oh, yeah, whitewashing, just like everything else. And I know he's not one of the biblical Israelites, but I just want to share that with you as well to show you that this has been going on throughout history so that you can see it with both eyes open. Here is another before and after, and as you can see, this looks. This is the before right here, and this is the after over here. And like I said, creds go to Afrocentric Queen for finding all of this. And as you can see, they look a lot lighter. I wonder why, but let's keep going. Here's a painting that we see, what? The Ascension of Our Lord. Russian icon from the Malo Kirillov Monastery found in Russia. As you can see, here's the before over here. And here's the after. I wonder what has changed here. This comes from Theophanes the Greek, and it says transfiguration of what they call the Most High, and this is the before, and this is the after, and this is from circa 1403 AD. And as you can see, this is how they look originally, and this is how they look afterwards, before and after, before and after. Wow, the wonders of a paintbrush. This Russian icon depicts the resurrection of Lazarus as mentioned in the New Testament or the Renewed Covenant. And here's the before picture right here. And here's the after picture right here. So you can see it before and after what happened. Here is the image of the Black Messiah that's found all over Europe. And this is the before and this is the after. What happened? Here's He's holding the same book, holding the exact same hand gesture right here, the same halo right there. It's the same thing, only something changes drastically over here. I wonder what that something is, the before and the after, the before and the after. What has happened and what has been hidden from you all this time? 
Here are apostles Peter and Paul, or as we can say, Kappa and Shaul, their Hebrew names. But as you can see, something changed about them because here's the image before and here's the image after. Well, what happened? What changed about them? I'll let you figure that out on your own. Here's the Messiah that who's washing the disciples or the Talmudim's feet. And here's the image before, which is a Russian icon. And here's the image after, as you can see. Well, what has changed about this? This is before. This is the real authentic image. But here's another one that comes after that. I wonder why that is. Now, this is the image that I showed you earlier, but here is the black messiah who's on the throne, and this is depicted in Greece, and this is from the 18th century AD, circa 18th century AD, and here we see those symbols once again, so we know it is authentic, at least right here, and here's the book that he's holding, and as you can see, he's holding the same exact hand gesture here, and he looks, he looks real dark skin here, oh, but when we look over here, something changes drastically, the same book is right there, the same robes are on, Oh, the same hand gesture. Oh, what has changed the before and the after? The before right here and the after right there. I wonder what has changed. I honestly don't know how to make this any easier than I possibly can. I'm trying to make this as easy as possible. But as you see, this is the before and this is the after. What has happened here? I'll tell you what has happened. Whitewashing. Now, this is a depiction of the Last Judgment, and as you can see, this is the before right here, and this is the after right here. I wonder what happened. Not only that, but here, this is what, this comes from the descent from the Cross State Russian Museum. And as you can see right here, this has been hidden from so long. This shows the black, the, the black, um, depiction and this shows the white one before and after i wonder what happened but let's keep going on because we see the entombment that comes from the crestroma state historical architectural and art museum reserve and this is the before as we see what what looks to be a black messiah to me as well as other black talmudim and black disciples with other black uh angels so called that's the before and this is the after i wonder what happened but please, you can pause all of this. Please do pause all of this on your own time because I want you to see the real truth for what it is. And this is showing you what the Council of Nicaea before and after. This was the Council of Nicaea before. And as you can see, they all look black, dark skin to me. Oh, but this is how it looks afterwards. What happened before and after? Do not be deceived. But you all better seriously wake up if you already haven't because even Wikipedia is admitting truth to you because here I am at the Wikipedia website and it even shows you of Amos or Amos, one of the prophets. And what does it show you? The real authentic picture of Amos. I hope you are seeing this with both your eyes open because I honestly don't know how easier I can make this for you. And it says an 18th century Russian icon of the prophet that comes from from what? The Transfiguration Church of the Kiski uh, Monastery in Karelia, Russia. Oh my goodness, but it's not just him. Now this is a more enlarged picture of Amos or Amos, and as you can see, this is how he actually looks. This is a, a real authentic Russian icon of how the prophet Amos actually looks. Oh, but it's not just Amos, it's many more. Oh, like I said, the truth is finally coming to light and you are finally seeing the truth so that you are without excuse. And I'm even getting my source from Wikipedia itself. So you can't say I'm making this stuff up because I am in fact not. But it says from Wikipedia Haggai, it says Russian icon of Haggai, 18th century from the same place of the Kizhi Monastery in Karelia, Russia. And I'll do a large, a more enlarged photo of Haggai in just a second. Here is the more enlarged photo of Haggai, and as you can see, what color does he look like? This is the scroll that he's holding up, and this is an actual authentic 18th century AD Russian icon of Haggai the prophet, but it's not just Haggai. Because Wikipedia also shows us Micah the prophet as well. And as we see, Russian Orthodox icon of the prophet Micah, 18th century from the same place, the Kizhi Monastery in Karelia, 
Russia and he looks just like that. That is Micah the prophet. That is more accurate. What happened to all the white prophets though? I thought they were all white. What happened? It's not looking like it. Now here's an enlarged photo of Micah that was taken, or should I say the icon that was taken of him. You can see the scroll that he's holding right here, and you can see the actual depiction of Micah. You wanted proof, didn't you? You kept asking for the proof. Where's the proof? Where's the proof? Here's the proof right in front of you. You want the proof? Here's the proof. Because here I am at Wikipedia once again, and I'm showing you what Hosea or Husha, one of the prophets. And here we are at Wikipedia again. And it says, an 18th century Russian icon of the prophet Husha or Hosea in the Kizhi Monastery of Karelia, Russia. And no, he was not Jewish. He is, in fact, Hebrew. But that's what they don't want you to know. Now, this is the more enlarged photo of Husha or Hosea. You can see that he has the scroll right here, and this is the actual depiction of the Russian icon from all the way back from 18th century AD. So you can see him clearly, and you can pause if you'd like, because I know this truth is very unbelievable for some of you. Well, you better start believing it quick, fast, and in a hurry. But we're not done. We still have a few more to go. And here we are showing Nahum, or this is what Wikipedia shows of Nahum. And what does it show? It says Russian Orthodox icon of the prophet Nahum, 18th century from the Kizhi Monastery in Karelia, Russia. Oh, so now we see it again. Wikipedia is finally admitting truth to us right in front of our faces. And I just hope we are seeing it with both eyes open. Once again, here's a zoom in of Nahum the prophet. And as you can see, here's his scroll right here. This is what he's wearing. And this is his skin color, dark skin. But not only that, you can also see the hair on his hair looks like wool. Very interesting, isn't it? Sounds like scripture to me. Matches scripture of who the real biblical Israelites are to me. And once again, I'm back at Wikipedia, and here I am at Habakkuk, and this is from Wikipedia itself. And as you can see, this is Habakkuk, and this is what it shows and depicts the 18th century Russian icon of the prophet Habakkuk in the Kizhi Monastery, Karelia, Russia. I hope you're seeing this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom in so you can see it even better from here. Now, this is the Russian icon that's depicting Habakkuk, and this is a zoom in of it, as you can see. And here's the scroll right here. You can actually see who he really is right here. So, wow, looks very, very dark skinned to me. Not like anything they depict on those movies. Huh, somebody's lying. Oh, but that's not all, because here I am back at Wikipedia showing you Malachi. And as you can see, this is the painting that comes from Duzio di Buon and Zegna from circa 1310 AD from the Museo del Opera del Duomo in the Siena Cathedral that is located right here. We're going to zoom in once again, and then we're going to see some other prophets and their, and who they really are. Now, this is a close-up of the prophet Malachi, and as you can see, this is exactly how he looks with the scroll right there. And as you can see, this is him right there in the painting. You can see him right there in the painting. How does he look? Now, this is depicting Zachariahu or Zachariah, and this is also from Wikipedia, from the commons of Wikimedia, so you can find it right there. This is the Russian icon that comes from 18th century AD from the Kizhi Monastery in Karelia, Russia. And as you can see, this is depicting none other than Zachariah, but the, he's not the only one. This is the Russian icon that's depicting Obadiah, who, or who you may call the prophet Obadiah. And this is his scroll right here. And as you can see, this is the accurate depiction from 18th century AD. So this is Obadiah. And like I said, I zoomed it in so you can see it perfectly with both of your eyes. And this also comes from Wikimedia, or Wikipedia, I should say, from the comments of the Russian icon depicting Safan Yahu, also known as Zephaniah, uh, one of the Old Testament biblical prophets right here, as you can see from 18th century AD. Oh, but trust me, there's more than this. 
Now this is a very old and very ancient painting that features forefather Isaac or Yitzchak by Simone Martini from 1284 through 1344 AD from the Maista fresco 1313 to 1315 AD and it's located at the Siena Palazzo Publico Hall of the Mapamondo and that is where you can find this image right here depicting Isaac and creds to true depiction of Israel for finding all of these that I'm about to show you and here's the scroll right here looks real accurate to me now once again this is credits to the true depiction of israel for the ones i'm about to show you right now and then thanks to them for finding all these now of course this is ducio di bueno zegna that show and depict moses and king david or musha and king david from the 1310s circa 1310s a.d and as you can see here's moses right here holding a scroll right there and this is uh, king david or king david with the crown right here and really all praises and esteem go to yahuwah for really leading me to all of this and showing this all to all to you so that you can see the truth for yourself and be deceived no more once again i know i showed this earlier but here's another depiction of a russian icon of king solomon or king shaluma as you can see he has a crown on and there's the scroll and this is once again from true depiction of israel and it says it's from the kizi island monastery north russia uh, circa 1700 through 1725 a.d and this appears to be how the temple looked back then or at least a depiction of the temple now here's another ancient Russian painting and icon and this shows you Abraham and Isaac or Abraham and Yitzchak and this is from circa 18th century AD from the Holy Monastery of Agiu Pavlo and this is how it looks and as you can see this appears to be Abraham right here and this appears to be Isaac right there and this is of course from the true depiction of Israel. Now this is a picture showing you the penitent thief and Jacob from around circa 18th century AD from the Holy Monastery of Agio Pavlo. And as you can see, what does it show you of? Here's the penitent thief as depicted right here in this Russian icon. And here's Jacob or Yahoo Cub depicted right here. What are they really hiding from you? Like I said, this is only for educational purposes, and that is what this video is intended for. But this is from True Depiction of Israel as well, and it says, Father and Son from Book of Hours Illuminated Manuscript in France found around central Paris in circa 1460 through 1470 AD, and it depicts the Father and the Son. Now, we know images are graven, and we are not to worship graven images, but like I said, I'm doing this for educational purposes, so that you can see the truth for what it really is and see that the original biblical Israelites were in fact black and they are black today. Now this is actually a Greek icon that's dated back in the circa 1600s AD and as you can see this is the sons of Abraham or Abraham and here's Abraham depicted right here and here are all of his sons depicted right there. Wow they look very dark skinned to me. Now this is another Russian icon of King David or King David by Niccolo di Segna from the 1300s AD, circa 1300 AD. And I do apologize if I'm butchering the Russian names a little bit, but the, once again, this is showing you King David. You can even see his crown right here. And once again, uh, creds to true depiction of Israel and for Yahuwah, especially for leading me and guiding me to these pictures and showing you real authentic truth. Now this comes from Mark's Basilica that's located in Venice, Italy, and this is from the 1100s AD or circa 1100 AD, and this is depicting the Last Supper. And what is it showing you? I hope you are seeing it with both your eyes open. Here is an ancient and a Russian depiction of the event detailing Elijah or Eliyahu being carried into heaven by a set-apart messenger who you may call an angel. And this is the fiery ascent of the prophet Eliyahu or Elijah from circa 1570 AD by Great Utsyug of Russia. That is where it can be founded from. And I do apologize if I'm butchering that name. But as you can see, this is, this is the prophet Elijah right here. And this is the ascent from the set-apart messenger are also known as the angels. 
This is another picture of that's depicting the Messiah, Yahusha HaMashiach, that is cracking the clouds open. This is just another depiction of it from another Russian icon, as you can see it. If you would like to see it even more in detail, please pause the video so that you can actually see it. Here's an image of St. Peter, or Kaffa as uh, in the Hebrew, and this is depicting Peter uh, from Byzantine medallion that was made in Constantinople in circa 1100 AD, and this is how he actually looked. And like I said, I know I'm going pretty fast here, but if you would like, you can pause it at any time so you can see it and take in the truth for what it really is. Now, this is actually a Greek depiction of Daniel the prophet, and this comes from circa 14th century AD found in Athens, Greece. And as you can see, this is the prophet Daniel right here. So hopefully this has helped you. And like I said, creds the true depiction of Israel and creds to Afrocentric queen. But, but all esteem goes to Yahuwah and his true son, Yahusha HaMashiach, for leading me and guiding me here, as well as the set-apart messengers for protecting me from the powers that be and leading me to truth, as I hope he is doing for you as well, so you can see the truth and come out of the lies that are perpetrated by the Jewish Zionists, as well as Babylon herself. Sell. Now that you've seen some of the pictures of the original biblical Israelites and how they really truly look, now I'm going to turn your attention to some other facts that have been hidden from you from history and that have also been whitewashed, I wonder why. Now this is showing you the original King James, but let's keep going. So if we keep scrolling down, this is a Russian icon depicting who? Ivan the Terrible. Okay, but let's keep going. This is another Russian icon that depicts who? Saint Nicholas. And let's keep going and this depicts right here King David as we see Dawid and this right here is Shaluma or King Solomon and if we keep going this was uh, Beethoven he was Moorish and he was black and this is Mozart who was also Moorish and black now now don't get it twisted the Moors and the Hebrews are not the same thing what it's trying to get you to see though is that all of the people back then were in fact black until they were painted white but let's keep going here's some more russian icons that you can see of the black messiah yahusha let's keep going we see more of, of black depictions of what russian icons of miriam of course and we keep going and we keep going and we see them and we see more of them some of these i already shown and i know i have shown them so it may be a little repetitive i do apologize for that but i want you to see just the truth and what the truth really is and we see the messiah here once again but let's keep going or what looks to be the messiah but let's keep going we see more russian icons that have been purposely hidden from us i'm going to keep going scrolling pretty fast here we see another depiction of the messiah and the mother uh, throughout russian history as well and it just keeps going. But like I said, a lot of history has been hidden from you and stripped away from you. It has been stripped away from all of us. I don't care if you're white, brown, black, blue, green, yellow, red, purple. I don't care what color you are. The history has been removed. But guess what? The truth is what makes us free. So what happened then? What happened? Why has all this history been hidden from us and twisted from us? I'll tell you why iconoclasm, as you can see right here, the synagogues of Satan were the ones who painted over the pictures from black and brown and made them white, as you can see right here. I hope you are actually seeing this with both of your ears and your eyes open not only that but we're gonna see if scripture agrees with us because remember what i said we're trying to figure out truth right now and the question is who were the real biblical israelites and who are the real biblical israelites today but right now we're tackling who the real biblical israelites were during the time of the messiah yahusha hamashiach during the time of the prophets and during the time of the biblical times and we're going to see if scripture agrees with us and we're going to see if the King James Version even admits that some of the prophets were black. And we're going to see what the scripture says about the synagogues of Satan because you're going to see I'm not making that up. That is according to scripture itself. Now, if that didn't wake you up, then I honestly don't know what will because I've just spent over an hour of my time with you and all in dedicated hours, if not months, searching for these pictures and all doing all this research to give you real authentic truth 
from the heart so that you will not be deceived anymore or be deceived by the coming deception that will be the false messiah with a false white image because i've just proven to you that the messiah ain't white whether you want to believe it or not but here i am in eob in job chapter 30 and we're going to see the scripture agree with us the scripture agreed that if the prophets were black what color was it according to them now i already went over one of them with you which is genesis or barashith chapter 2 verses 7 where it says that yahuwah our creator has formed man of the dust of the ground and man became a living soul let me repeat that dust of the ground what color is dust okay let's go to verse 30 and see what job says or eob he says my skin is black upon me and my bones are burned with heat oh what color is his skin my skin is black upon me and my bones are burned with heat what color is his skin let's keep going let's go to song of solomon or shaluma in chapter one and now this is talking about with the shulamite singing with solomon and it says we're going to be reading from verses five through six and this is what the shulamite says i am black but comely O ye daughters of Yerushalayim, or Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon, or Shaluma, look not upon me because I am black, because the sun had looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but mine own vineyard have I not kept. What color is the Shulamite and Solomon? They are, in fact, black and i've already shown you biblical and i've already shown you icons and proof of the icons of solomon many of times all of which depict him to be black but why does he look white in mainstream media i wonder who controls mainstream media but let's keep going now we're here in yarm yahoo or jeremiah chapter 14 and we're going to be reading from verses 2 it says yahoo duh or judah mourneth and the gates thereof languish and what does this part say they are black unto the ground and the cry of yarushalayim or jerusalem is gone up what color are they let's keep going let's go to some other of yarm yahoo or jeremiah's writings let's go to lamentations chapter 4 and verse 8 and it says their visage or their countenance is blacker than a coal oh that's really dark they are not known in the streets their skin cleaveth to their bones it is withered it is become like a stick oh so what's blacker than a coal their visage is blacker than a coal what is their countenance what how do they look oh but let's go to lamentations chapter 5 and let's go to verse 10 and it says our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine it says our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine what color was their skin and let's go to daniel chapter 7 now and let's read from verses 9 the vision that dan daniel have of our father yahuwah and let's see how our father yahuwah looks it says i beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit that's talking about yahuwah whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool his throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire oh so what how does he look hair of his head like the pure wool who are the only group of people you know in history that have hair like pure wool is it the is it the is it the depiction of the jewish zionists let's keep going revelation chapter one we're going to see the depiction of the messiah and how the messiah is described by yahukanan or john let's go to revelation chapter one verses 13 through 15 and it says, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks or menorah, one like unto the son of man. Oh, so that's Yahusha HaMashiach clothed with the garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with the golden girdle his head and his hairs were like white were white like wool. Wow. Just like Daniel 7, 9 that described the ancient of days as white as snow and his eyes were as a flame of fire and his feet were like unto fine brass as if they were burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters okay so his feet were burned in as if it were burned in a furnace well when brass is burned in a furnace it is very dark it is a very darkened color so the question is why do we see this white image being portrayed everywhere which does not fit into scripture neither does 
does the long hair because according to this it says his hairs are white like wool so how does any of that fit into scripture where is this coming from I'll tell you where it comes from. It comes from the synagogues of Satan. Those who call themselves the real Jews when they are in fact not. This is not according to me. This is according to scripture. And I'm going to prove it to you because I'm here in Revelation chapter 2 verses 9. And many so-called end time prophets, they love jumping over these two verses in scripture. I wonder why. But let's see what they say. It says, I know thy works. And this is the Messiah talking, by the way i know thy works in tribulation and poverty but thou art rich and i know the blasphemy of them which say they are jews and are not but are the synagogue of satan just like i said at the beginning of the video who are the only people you know or who are the only group of people who worship in synagogues who are the only people who claim to be the jews who claim to say they are the real jews and are not but are the synagogues of satan who are the only group of people in history that you know who are masquerading themselves as the fake jews even though scripture tells us that they're not the real jews and who are the only group of people who not only worship in the synagogues of satan but had to fake the holocaust or as i call it the holla hoax in order to perpetuate such a giant lie to the rest of the world who are the only people who did that and who are the only people group of people i should say who are conspiring for world control you can read about it in the protocols of the elders of zion oh but i bet you still think it's a hoax don't you Oh, but we're not finished because this is real authentic truth today. And we're here in Revelation chapter 3, verses 9, where the Messiah is addressing the seven assemblies. And it says, Behold, I will make of them of what? The synagogue of Satan. Which, what do they do? They say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. That's talking about the real biblical Israelites who are so-called African Americans who are indeed so-called black people as I have just proven today. So what else does this prove? This proves that the 1948 Israel is in fact a fraud, that it does not fulfill any biblical prophecy. The only biblical prophecy it fulfills is Revelation chapter 2 verses 9 and Revelation chapter 3 verses 9 as I have just proven today. And anybody telling you different or anybody telling you that, oh, it does fulfill biblical prophecy uh, as the real Israel, is pure blasphemy because I have just proven otherwise with scripture itself from the King James Version so that you are without excuse to know the real truth. And the very final place I'm going to be taking you today is Galatians or Galatim chapter 3 verses 13 to 14. And this will tell you how the real Messiah, Yahusha HaMashiach, how he really died. And it says HaMashiach or the English Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us for it is written. Where is it written? In the law, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Yahusha HaMashiach that we might receive the promise of the Ruach or spirit through faith. What does it say? Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Who are the only group of people you know in history that have hung on trees? Is it the fake Jews in Israel who've been hung on trees? No. But the Messiah, it even says that the Messiah himself was hung on a tree as well. I wonder what this is alluding to and really showing you. Today, real truth has been brought to you because as, it, as you can see, the real Messiah hung on a tree. And I will do a part two to this, Yahuwah willing, to expose to you who the real biblical Israelites are today.